So we've seen an explosion of these um, coined realities since the Miriam Kruger's uh, artificial reality in 1983, uh, including uh, some that are uh, reminded to us by our closed one, like Brandon said, you know, physical reality does exist and should be kept in mind. Um, okay, so uh, what uh, I want, just want to uh, uh, talk to this man here. Um, he's uh, 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 sorry, William James, a uh, fantastic uh, American philosopher who said there is one reality. Reality is experience-based. Everything that you can experience or, or, or you can imagine or you can experience is real. So that simplifies things a lot. So all these things, in fact, would be uh, instances of, of the real, you know, and we have to uh, really uh, think that the major challenge, design challenge for an experienced designer like me, is how do you work transition between the different uh, experience, iterations of reality? Because most people will not care. Uh, they will, uh, eventually when, they, when uh, as Carmack said, we will uh, not uh, uh, think about putting uh, HMD on, then we will go from one to the other without uh, thinking about it. So transitions. Uh, this is a kind of display where it's like a room. You, you walk in, it's like imagine the, the cave, the 90s cave, but in a more uh, uh, spherical one. Uh, actually, this is one instance where uh, we're not inspired by Star Trek. Star Trek took an inspiration from this for their 2010 film. Um, we turned this thing around to make this dome at SAT in Montreal, which is more, more generous. We can invite uh, hundreds of people in there to share an experience. And, uh, uh, but of course now with HMD, immersion, which is the thing that uh, is not a new idea, but that is very big, is taking a new dimension. It can be distributed around much more easily. So we extend our full dome uh, mapping technology to HMDs. But uh, here comes WebVR. WebVR is really promising to transform the clickable pages of the web into uh, walkable spaces. So for me, WebVR is really uh, 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 an inhabitable space. It's inviting us in. But the question is, how are we invited in? Uh, to me, uh, I'm just taking this because it's, it's really fresh uh, from uh, last week. Uh, 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 Facebook is, is proposing uh, to, uh, is offering us tools to create these inhabitable uh, web spaces. But as avatars, I think avatars are, are, I mean, we can understand the need for avatars. They are, you know, bandwidth limitation, uh, latency are big issues. So there's a way to invite people in, uh, in sessions uh, collectively. But uh, the limitation for uh, uh, nonverbal communication, where you have mostly a, a very few gestures that can be recognized by the interface, is a problem for me. So uh, what about, you know, a, a situation room? How would it work in a situation where you have to take really tough decisions? Uh, you know, uh, critical on-site design reviews, you know, how would it work to be an avatar like that? Um, uh, yeah, a, a tough negotiation like a divorce between partners at a lawyer's office if you cannot meet in flesh. Actually, it might be easier not to meet in flesh in, in situations like that. So all these situations will not work well with avatars. So the goal is to build a virtual teleportation platform able to convey minute by minute the subtle and essential skills, social skills of body language and nonverbal communication. So we have to work on eye contact, facial expression, dynamic posturing and positioning, spatial behavior and strategies, effective touch and manipulation. So uh, I'm going to show you quickly what we've done at SAT in the last five or six years on that. The first thing we did in 2010 was to develop a concept of a kind of a, modern day immersive phone boot. You know, before we had cell phones, there was a network of phone boots that gave us access to, to a communication network. And then the first implementation of that was using, that was before the Kinect. So we used just the digital cameras that were um, positioned around a, um, is this playing? <coughs> positioned around the, the viewer in one of these devices. And it should be playing, but it's not, so i move to the next one. But this is the display. We have these, these cameras that were just put there in, at people's horizon. We, need, we had four. And that was enough to have all the information that you need to be anywhere around the person. Then when the Kinect came, uh, uh, the year in 2012, we used it uh, because 
we could suddenly um, uh, extract the background from the uh, from the foreground and uh, have this uh, encounter. Doesn't play. Usually, I do what like other people. I use my own computer. But uh, this is a meeting with my student Audrey, and you, if it moved, you would see that even if it's very low resolution. The, uh, the, the, you really feel the presence of somebody. I could recognize her from very little, uh, even if it's low res, from, uh, from how she moves, how she stands. And that's something we discovered at the time, is that if she points at something in the environment, you see exactly what she's pointing at. So it's natural body language. Um, let me move to the next one. So this is the system that we used. Sorry. This is the, the other system that we used. Okay, so we replaced the dome because it doesn't work in natural environments with, with cheap screens from Samsung. And uh, we put the Kinect cameras uh, in, between, you know, in three positions and then you have enough information there to export the person in real time. We had the 120 seconds of, uh, of latency there. Not quite enough, but uh, it, it, was, it would be easy to, uh, to, um, to reduce. We wrap up. Huh? Wrap up? Okay. Okay, the, uh, I'm go I'll go to the, uh, the thing that we're working on now is texture and mesh experiment. Uh, basically, we're just like uh, juxtapose meshes from the Kinect. It's funny that it doesn't play. Huh? Okay, anyway, so let me go to the, how much time left? So, I? Up, so. Oh, okay. So we need help on this. If anybody is interested, uh, you can find me.